All right, man. So it looks like Trump has actually quit. So Kamala Harris has surged in the race. Uh, Biden, she has surged on Biden's numbers massively. And a lot of the important states, she's gone up by like as much as like six points in states like Georgia and those areas. Biden was actually losing by like six and some change. And she's actually now up leading in Georgia, for example. So she surged really, really hard, as we've seen. That surge looks like it's actually stopping right now, though, because it looks like she's contracting a little bit in the polls. I think she's probably hit a cap of what she can do with what she's done so far. She'll probably have to take advantage of other avenues like the debate, um, as well as interviews and those kinds of things. So what's pretty interesting is Trump campaign pulls away from three target states after Harris surge. Ex-president diverts resources from states he boasted about winning while Biden was Democratic candidate. Um, Donald Trump has quietly wound down his presidential campaign in states he was targeting just six weeks ago amid polling evidence showing that Kamala Harris's entry into the presidential race has put them out of reach and narrowed his path to the White House. The Republican presidential nominee's campaign has diverted resources away from Minnesota, Virginia, and New Hampshire, states Trump was boasting he could win while Joe Biden was a Democratic candidate, to focus instead on a small number of battleground states. Money is being poured into the three, quote, blue wall states of Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, which were all carried by Biden in 2020 and are seen as vital to the outcome of the November's election. Special attention is being paid, close, uh, paid to Pennsylvania, which is 19 electoral college votes, and where a new CNN poll shows Trump and Harris tied at 47% each. Um, resources have also been transferred to south, southern and southwestern Sunbelt states, namely North Carolina, Georgia, Nevada, and Arizona, where Trump previously had healthy leads over Biden that have whittled away since Harris replaced the U.S. president at the top of the Democratic ticket. So it's pretty interesting is basically there were polling numbers that were showing that Biden was actually close in other states that they thought they could potentially win. And I was actually really happy when the news had to come out because uh, the article actually talks about how Trump was actually planning to open up a bunch of stuff in the state of Minnesota. Uh, he was supposed to open up a bunch of new offices and everything. I thought that was awesome because basically what I thought was uh, he could spread himself thin. And so Trump is actually broke right now. His campaign is broke. They can't raise shit. I think they raised like $100 million and then uh, Kamala Harris had raised like, uh, I think like $500 million or hundreds of millions or something. So what that means is any dollar that he has because he has less is going to be much, much more impactful than a dollar that Kamala Harris has because she has so much more. So... I was thinking if he's going to waste his time in states like Minnesota and those ones, that's great because that's one less dollar going to any battleground state. So that was what I was, I was actually really excited when I saw that. But we can check out the polls and kind of compare what they look like between the two. So if we look here, um, if we were to go and look at the situation back in Minnesota, for example, we can see is back in, 20, uh, back in 2024 when Biden was still here, it was even in the aggregate. The poll numbers were actually even in the state of Minnesota, which is looking really, really scary. Minnesota is kind of like this faux swing state because it definitely leans blue, but it's kind of like really close, but it leans blue. So it's kind of like this faux swing state. So they're even when it's actually Harris. But then when we take a look at uh, or when it was Biden, now it's plus 7.5. This is how massive of a shift it's been. So a really, really large shift, even in these kind of like fringe, uh, these not fringe blue, but slightly blue lean areas, 7.5. Another state being New Hampshire as well. Uh, New Hampshire is also another really close blue state. Harris uh, is up by 6.9 points. Nice. Uh, she's up by 6.9. We can check what Biden's numbers were in New Hampshire. It was dead. Or this is Minnesota. Sorry. Um, I'm going to take a look at New Hampshire. So Harris up by uh, 6.9. Uh, and then uh, do you have the numbers here? I guess. Uh, let's see for New Hampshire. If you take a look here. So this is 6.9 for Kamala Harris. And then uh, it looks like for New Hampshire, we don't have the old numbers here from the aggregator, it looks like, so that's unfortunate. And then we can try to take a look at Virginia as well. So uh, Virginia does not have an aggregator, but let's see if Joe Biden, we have them. So Joe Biden in Virginia was only up by 1.4. Again, another, I think like this is another fringe kind of swing state. It's kind of, it's definitely lean blue swing, uh, lean blue state now, because he's only up by 1.4. And then we can kind of peruse a little bit through the Kamala Harris polls. So she's up three in the in the recent polls that have dropped. There haven't been too many Virginia polls, which is pretty interesting. Qantas polls is another right wing pollster. They like retweet Elon Musk and that kind of stuff. These are old July polls, which are really old, but the new ones say all say plus three. So that's good news for Kamala Harris. But what I actually think they should do is low key. I feel like the way so what's happening right now is the Republicans are actually flooding the market with a bunch of trash polls. So we can take a look at this list. A bunch of these names are back. 
So Patriot polling just dropped a swath of polls in a bunch of swing states that are, that are skewing the average. Uh, Wick, John Wick, I guess, makes polls. John Wick, he might be good at killing people, but he's not good at polling. So Wick, literally the worst one on this list that we've noticed so far. Wick is trash. Patriot polling, trash. Insider advantage, trash. They're dropping polls. Future Folgar, also trash. These these four are actually, uh, they're actually combining to be like a, a almost a majority share of the new polls that have dropped. In some of those swing states, in the previous like uh, seven, uh, 10 polls, and there's seven pollsters, like three out of seven of them will be the trash pollsters, almost half. It's it's insane, right? Unfathomable how crazy it is. And then there's Spry Strategies, which is also trash. Um, and I think there's, oh, there's McLaughlin as well. They're actually F rated. I forgot to mention in the other video. They're literally rated F, like a fail F. That's how crazy it is. And they somehow have Trump up too, I think, in that, in that poll, which is insane. So what the Democrats low-key should do is they should flood the market. They should create like trash pollsters, right? Like fake pollsters the way that the Republicans have and just flood the market in Virginia, in New Hampshire, and in uh <laughs> and in minnesota to show that you know trump is surging now you would have to make sure that you know you know the danger of that obviously being like the media coverage would be bad in terms of like oh man minnesota's in play and all this but assuming that that doesn't impact the election enough you know i'm kind of joking here but i think it'd be a funny strategy to just flood the polls because again i was really really happy when i saw the news that he was dumping a bunch of money and resources into the state of minnesota because there was no chance he was gonna win the state of Minnesota. So I was like, dude, this is amazing. That's awesome. But so the fact that he's pulling out, like you would think, oh man, Trump is quitting. That's great. It's actually not because he's quitting states that he definitely can't win to put money in states that he actually can win. That's just, that's the that's kind of the shitty part here. Um, it says here an internal Trump campaign memo even before the debate posited ways that the former president could carry Minnesota and Virginia. Partly helped by the presence of the independent candidate, R.F. Kennedy Jr., whose campaign was initially thought to pose a greater threat to Biden before contrary polling evidence changed Trump's calculus. So, uh, I don't know if you're trying to find the first order condition, like trying to be like F prime of X equals zero. But um, another interesting note here, too, is this means that the Trump campaign was really looking at like a serious, serious victory, where it's like winning basically everything. They were not content with winning uh, with the Rust Belt and the Sun Belt and everything. I guess they wanted more. I don't know if they viewed these states like Minnesota, Virginia, New Hampshire as hedges against losing potential states that they would need, or if they looked at it as like, oh, hey, sprinkles on an ice cream cone. I'm not sure which one they looked at. Knowing Trump, though, considering how narcissistic he is, he's probably thinking of his sprinkles on the on the ice cream cone. Um, it says, as optimism surged, Trump and his running mate, J.D. Vance, held a rally in Minnesota shortly after the Republican convention while the campaign said it planned to open eight offices in the state and build up staff. That's crazy. Since then, Harris replaced Biden and chose the Minnesota governor, Tim Walz, as a running mate, helping her to shore up local support while Kennedy has suspended his campaign and endorsed Trump. Another interesting thing is, too, we were always talking about how Tim Walz was kind of like, uh, you know, he didn't have like the swing state advantage thing that, you know, uh, you know, Josh Shapiro had. But considering that, you know, the Minnesota was so close with Biden, you could kind of consider it that way. I mean, he was, he was only up by like one point. So you kind of think of Tim Walz as, you know, technically being like a swing state person or having some kind of assistance in a state like that. Um, they made 540 million in August alone, which is unfathomable, unbelievable. I think they only made like a hundred something million. It says the predicted rash of new Trump offices and hires in Minnesota appears not to have happened. Axios reported, uh, in Virginia, the site of Vance's first solo rally after being appointed to the ticket. Trump has not staged a rally for six weeks and the campaign has stopped citing memos claiming he can flip the state. It's apparent slide down the priority list of far cry from 28 June when the former president staged a rally in Chesapeake a, a day after his ultimately race-changing debate with Biden. The clearest evidence of the switch in the campaign's thinking has come in New Hampshire, which a former Trump field worker said this week was no longer trying to win. I, I uh, report on that as well. That one didn't seem to get a lot of coverage outside of it, which is pretty interesting. It says Trump has not appeared there since winning the Republican primary in January and has not sent a major surrogate since the spring, despite New Hampshire being identified by Michael Watley, a chair of the Republican National Committee after the June debate as one of the states the Trump campaign was targeting to expand its electoral winning map. Again, I wonder if they were using it as hedges or if they wanted more, they just wanted more victories. Recent polls have shown Harris leading outside the margin of error. The selection is going to be won in those seven swing states. Lou Garguio, the co-chair of Trump's campaign chair at uh, Campaign New Hampshire, Maybe his name's Gargle though, because he gargles Trump's balls. That's where the efforts got to be put. So they switched completely. So it's been a 180 degree. This is one of the big things that happens from Kamala Harris's surge, is that he's actually quitting these three states that were considered to be winnable with Biden, but no longer winnable now. 
So this is one of the benefits you could view as Kamala Harris winning. But the other thing is, this is a big downside because I thought he would be able to waste a bunch of his money and resources in those states that he can't win. So I was actually excited by that. So I'm actually saddened by the fact that he's pulling out of these three states, especially because he's broke. His campaign is broke. It's always been broke. Ever since 2016, he's always been broke. Hillary and, and Biden always outraised more than him, way outraised him. Um, and that's happening again. So a strategy could be if your Democrats flood the polling markets with shit polling. The only thing is they might have internal polling that they might trust instead of it. But Donald Trump is such a narc, he might believe it. He might even be down to believe it over his own internal polling because he might be like, damn, like this just looks better. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a possibility. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. But Trump quitting multiple states that he thought he could win.